pilgrimage through life, we will have to carry a draining duffel bag of depression. Not necessarily on our shoulders or on our back. Sometimes it's simply in our heart. We may be that very one who smiles all the time, but hurting on the inside. And it's an all too familiar disposition of melancholy, and we all have some seasons that we have a bout of depression. We stand up another notable men and women in the Bible, in the Word of God, that experience depression. So you can rest assured you're not alone. It's nothing wrong with admitting that you have some feelings of sadness. We're not alone. For Job, in the word of God, lamented of his life after tremendous loss and a debilitating illness. And he even says in Job 7, 6, and 7, my days come to an end without hope. My eye will never again see anything good. Not only Job, but we have Moses. He was burdened with having to have provided leadership to over one million Hebrews and after their great exodus from Egypt. And he expressed frustration, trepidation with having to have that assignment to where he says in Deuteronomy 1.12, how can I bear the troubles and the burdens and the disputes of these people by myself? And we're all familiar with Elijah, who went day's journey into the wilderness and sat under a juniper tree, and he requested to die. In 1 Kings 19th chapter, verses 1 through 4, is the story of Elijah, and we all know of David. David attempted to conceal his sin. And we know that the Psalms are replete of times where David felt physiologically challenged, emotional turmoil came upon him, and he was depressed. David spoke of losing vitality, and he spoke of groaning ceaselessly, and he felt as though he was crushed under the heavy hand of God. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? He even said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And besides his sin, he went through uh, some, some domestic difficulties. And many of us can attest to that. And then there's Jonah. And then there's Jeremiah. The scripture is full of individuals who endured the dark night of the soul. And beyond characters of the Bible, as said, there's probably some of us here today. You know, when the, the children left home, and, 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 and I know it was an empty nest, you thought you'd be celebrating, and there are some here, probably you did celebrate, but it, there are some who recognize there's no more nurturing that I'll be able to give to that child, and, and you get saddened by the fact that the children are gone. I get few amens there, but then there are those, who, you know, again, I don't know what your situation is. And that's an assumption some of us have that in that empty nest, I'm going to do A, B, and C. Or when I lose a loved one, it's going to take this length of time and I'm going to go through all of the five you know, uh, signs of grief. I'm going to go through denial and anger and resentment. And I'm going to put all of those things. So I wish I could give it in a neat package and that I could tell you it will be you going along a certain continuum. But how many if you all know you can start at point A, jump to Y, stay back here at R, S, and, and all 